Right, we are back after lunch. Very nice. Very nice too. to <laughs> and roll. <laughs> uh, right, so uh, this is on now, completely dry. It's been out in the sun and it's done. So the Mod Podge has done its stuff. So yep. next up, we're going to Mod Podge the base. Yes. And then we're going to be getting messy with clay. Thin layer of air dry clay. It's going to be like ghost. Do you can come behind me? You're not really. No, no. All right. no you're okay. not that privileged. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, a bit of air dry clay. Like I said, there are other options, but this is what we've got to hand. Yes. That's what they sold it said store it. Yeah, I usually use DAS. DAS. DAS that's that's the expensive one, isn't it? Das. That's like a proper one. That's the cheapy hobbycraft version. Yeah, that sort of thing. So, right, liberally. So you could do it in little bits if you want. Right. Which might be a better idea than just lathering it all and trying to get it all on. So if you just cut it into, or divide it, should I say, into sections. Yeah. Yeah. So this just gives grip for the clay. Yes. To get a, yeah. a bit of a firm bite on. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a thick enough? That's plenty thick enough, yeah. Again, if you really think you could score the top a bit, yeah. to add a bit of texture, texture. to it, because it's quite smooth, but it should be fine for what we're doing. Yeah. So why would you use Mod Podge over using a normal PVA glue? Because you've got it with your top glue. Okay, well, I've got normal glue. <laughs> <laughs> you could use white glue. Any, any, you know. PVA will PVA do the job. Code. Yes. But again, it has to be water-based because otherwise you'll melt the yes. said stuff. Yes, you have a lot of um, texture in your flat surface. Yeah. And again, what's nice with this one, because you've got the matte one, it doesn't dry shape. No. All right, okay. So in other words, hurry up. Glory up or do a bit less. <laughs> get some play on it. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Right. I get you now. Yeah. Now I know what you meant said about doing it in sections. Just, uh, just divide it into okay. sections and put it on. Right. Okay. Well, let's stop it. We're here for a you, You're in. Uh, yeah. You, you, so, you're, you're fully committed. That'll steal that as well, actually. That's, that's what, what I was thinking. Bad, bad plan. In fact, yeah. it might be an idea just to cover it. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not going to put clay up on the embankment bit. Yeah. We'll give it a cut of Mod Podge anyway and it'll seal it all in. Okay. Because what you don't want is if when we come to putting other layers on, is it to get through and yeah. damage that. Now, we won't be doing it, but again, if you are using enamel products, mm -hmm. we'll melt it for a start, you know. Yeah. So it's always not a bad idea just to give it a sealer coat. Yes, just to protect it. All. Yeah. We may be using acrylics anyway, so mm -hmm. it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem for An us. Issue. But, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the last thing you want to do is do all this, and you can yeah, hear that oh, you sound imagine, yeah. of fizzing underneath yeah. as it Or if you even use an oil for weathering or stuff, it's again, it's going to be solvent based, and yes. Yeah. It's, it's not going to end well. No, you can imagine you do all your work and it starts melting on you. Yeah. Right, so we'll give it next one in that. Yes. <laughs> well, this is what we were discussing. You could literally. Yeah, once you've got a nice base like this, your options are sort of limited, isn't it? You can just sort of yeah, yeah, stick anything on it. Okay. Right, your clay, clay, go scissors, scissors, clay. Prepare to get covered. Is this what it is? Do I need an apron? Yes, I would say you need an apron and gloves and I'll put gloves on. All oh, right, I've got an apron. I'm sitting on it. So you got. Look... Oh, no. Where's your one, actually? Oh, it's on the chair over there, if you want to borrow one. Oh, have I got an apron? Here is one. Right, okay, yeah. So, what you basically want to do is grab a chunk. Right. You can see. Okay. But you need, you know, have a, yeah, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> Let's just cut, cut it open yes. a little bit. And then chop some off. Yeah. And then... Obviously, you need some water. That's why I said if you got some water. Okay, yeah. Put that pro probably put that on your hands rather right. than actually on there. Right. Okay. Um, keep yourself lubricated. <laughs> this is getting good. Yeah. Right. Yes. And then just thin. Thin. Like millimeter thick. Right. Yeah. Okay. Grab a... So just grab a chunk and then spread it out. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And start somewhere, and mm -hmm. that's it. But keep it as thin as you can. That's it, where your water's going to come in, that's it. Do I say you do a bit at a time? Yes. It's a bit time consuming. Yes, I didn't know. Yes. 
but you'll be fine. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, just all cracks. And you're oh, right. Filling in forever. Is it? Here you go. Hold on. There you get, go. Right, hold on, let's get a bit of water on this thing. Right, <laughs> That's the good. Ghost, the ghost is yeah. back. Right, okay. That's better. Sorted. Right. Ta-da! Oh, I can't touch anything. Yay! <laughs> We've got one finger. Which one do you want me to touch? I've got a clean finger. The little yes, finger's clean. It, which literally. one? Which one do you want to <laughs> switching off? <laughs> so I've just brought this back in from baking outside, and as you can see, the clay is dried. We have got a bit of crackage. If we've got the uh, number two, number two camera on, I'm going to have to use one of these. <laughs> which does happen with air dry clay. It's not the you know a, a deal breaker or anything. It's just just part and parcel. So what we're going to use is we have this neutral texture. Those could be in other flavours. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> this will suit for what we need. Which again is a fine acrylic paste. So we can just use our little spatula. And what we'll do is we'll just give it a, another thin coat. Just spread this on. You could also use any other sort of spread instrument you want. I don't want to be building this up really thick. So this, you can hear it, has got grit in it. Yeah. It gives you a texture. Yeah. It's just a texture taste. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using the AK one, but other people do. Yeah, the man manufacturers of their versions. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can hear it. Uh... Now this stuff doesn't crack, which is quite... Um, Quite a good feature about it, then it's in it. But we'll do the, the bigger cracks because we're going to cover this anyway. Then when it's dry, it's all sandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stuff. Can you do me hallway while you're out? Yeah, there? fill all the fake wood, right? Wood as well. All the cracks in the walls, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can use polyfiller. Yeah. You know, and if you want to kind of make your own, I bet you can put real fine sand in it. Mm -hmm. Your own. Yeah. Polyfiller work. That was one of the old school ways of doing it before all these came out. Yeah. You know. Again. No reason why you can't still do that. Mm -hmm. What we do need to think about is where the plane is actually going to sit, the aircraft is going to sit. Right. Make sure it's embedded because you don't want it levitating. No. Because that's not a good look. No. On any diorama base, you know, be it vehicles or aircraft, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. figures. It needs to be sort of planted into the scene. Yes. And so just got a random sort of texture on top of the clay. Trying to stop it from being sort of uniform. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, it's right. Is that okay? Yep. There you go. Out the I'll tell you what, actually, I'll just remove that. I don't want to soil the, <laughs> the frame. The frame, yeah. Right, so what else we will do is actually start getting a bit of. So we can actually just glob this on now mm -hmm. and it will dry. Yeah. So this is where we can get creative.
Still looks like a beach from the overhead. <laughs> more, like, more like a beach, yeah. And once we start getting some colour and stuff on it, that's when it'll all yeah. start to come together. And if you were making like a rock, yeah. you could do your plaster rocks and then you blend it in with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That up a bit. Yeah. So I think we'll finish this bit off. Yeah. Get the uh, idea of what we're doing. Yeah. And then we'll let that dry and then we can move on to the next stage. Nice. Yeah. Right, so we have been digging in the garden for Devonshire's finest soil. And amazingly we've come up with this, which doesn't look too bad. So we're just placing it on a baking tray with a bit of greaseproof paper. Spread it out a bit and we bake at what temperature? 180. 180 20 minutes. For 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the point of this it will dry it out, I take it, and kill it all the doesn't kill all any, any so, yes. yeah. so that's very nice. Right, fan assisted, this means we're gonna blow it all around my kitchen. No. no. Okay, okay, temperature. Should be right because we were it's still warm. And we just pop him in here to cook. There we go. Alexa, set an alarm for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Right, so we'll be back in 19. Yeah. <laughs> to with check the oven on, gloves on With the oven gloves on to see what we've cooked. Yeah. Okay, so. Checking in the oven. Oh, it looks like a brownie. <laughs> Well, it's changed colour, it's a lot lighter, and it's bloody hot. I mean, <laughs> that's hot. There we go. Nice. So, we'll let this cool. It's gold in it. I was going to say. I can see some some there. flakes of gold. <laughs> I'll get it down here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was just clay around there. Anyway, so what we'll do, let that cool down. Yep for a good sort of half hour or so, and then we'll sieve it to get out of any twigs and stuff we don't want, and then uh, we'll be sticking it on the base. So we're back again. Obviously we've got now got the, um, the textured paste on, which is dried. Okay, so next step is we've now got our super duper Devon's Finest soil, which we are going to apply to this pot here. Okay, so we've got the Mod Podge out again. We'll do it, at, as you can see, I'll put it, in a old um, kit box 
So this is the DR9 bulldozer box if anybody's interested. Just to catch any of the uh, overspill because this gets really messy. So I would advise if you're going to do this and uh, it's going to be the same with the static grass as well. Because again, it does get everywhere and you can catch it and then refilter it back into your tubs. Yeah. Okay. So again, we're going to do same thing as earlier. Apply some Mod Podge. We're going to do it in little sections this time, I think. So what we're going to try and avoid as well is actually getting too much of the soil on this on this flat part here. I say because this is supposed to be sort of a representing bulldozed ground. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. The okay. berms they just push it up. Yeah, they just push the soil and stuff out of the way and yeah. whatever and. So, do this bit first with my assistant. Yep. Hold that. So, got the soil. Literally, just pinch it. There we go. Sprinkle it on. It should nicely soak into the mud podge mixture. And then what we'll do is just. So this is part of our true grit range. True grit. Devon soil. Yep. We'll be selling this in little pots. For extortionate price yeah 15 pounds so that's how we do it <laughs> 15 pound a pot <laughs> again the trick we all like anything to do with is, is layering we'll get our first layer on if it takes a couple of layers it takes a couple of layers it's uh just part of the process With that bit, down here as well. There you go, sir. Mm -hmm. What people will use as well, tile grout. Sorry? Tile grout. Tile grout. Is another texturing method. Oh, right. And then what you do is you get a spray uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. surface tension. Yeah. And spray that down and yeah. in, in your watered down glue. Mm -hmm. So, loads of different ways of doing it. Mm. Give that a tap, get all the loose off. We'll let that dry. I think we'll add a bit more mm -hmm. there, and then obviously the stuff that's left, just mm -hmm. tip back. And just tip back in. Yeah, mm -hmm. do you want to do that for me? Right. So it is the next day. Uh, this has been drying overnight. Um, Matt's added some more 
pretty stuff wherever it went um so obviously when we had the soil we sat, sort of sieved it all the fine stuff makes up the major parts of it here we go and then we've got obviously our two types got a nice fine one down here and a, as you can hear bit of a rocky one and then Matt just used a little bit of Mod Podge to glue down some bigger bits here and there to add a little bit more texture. Texture is going to be the word of the build. Of the build, yes. Yeah. All to do with textures. Um, I've just taken it outside and sanded it all. Uh, so this is XBS phone and uh, one of the nice things to it is it is very, very sandable. It's a bit messy. You probably don't want to do it in here, but when you're sanding it, just to show, uh, if I use this as a bit of an uppercut just here, that literally it, it is really nice you know this is just a medium sander and as you can see it won't rip too much into it and it will smooth and polish it so you can I do a corner it carves really nice you know you've got nice gentle curves on it and you can smooth and I assume if you go down through the grits as well you'll be able to you know get a really nice soft yeah. finish to it and all the rest of it so again, and that's the thing with this, it is carvable, but as you can see, just a little bit there. And also I think it's probably not nice. It's to not good to breathe in. this in. So that's no. why we've done it no, all no, no. outside because we don't want to breathe this stuff in. Yeah. Um, so yes. So if you're going to be doing any sanding, I'll have a respirator in a very nice, well ventilated area. Yes. Um, do it on a nice breezy day. <laughs> so it goes everywhere, but on you. Uh, so yes. Yeah. So anyway, so what I've done is literally just go around and sand all the edges down in here and square off all the tops as you can see as well and just generally making sure it all fits in just like that so we put it back in the base and because of my expert measuring it fits perfect it does literally yeah, like that it does, yeah. so um we've decided not to stick it down but you could double sidey stick it down or whatever and put it into it and what now what we need to do is the planking but because obviously the reason we've put this in here is that we have to allow that this is sunk because this has got a counter sink to it and so what we can do now, we can come along with our little bit of uh, thing here. Where's my company pen? And we can just pop in here and there we can draw some marks in here to roughly where this is. Do you cut this beforehand roughly and then trim afterwards? For the shape, just well, leave it like a box yeah, on I here did, and then I, cut I'm it. I'm thinking because I normally use balsa and this is bass so it's a bit harder. Right. Balsa is just stick it on and just get a, a, knife a, a blade just... and just trim it yeah. but actually this is better because it's not going to be so porous right okay balsa obviously is really soft really yeah. porous and you have to seal that before okay. you can paint it so and it does I... look a bit rough and fluffy yeah but this is going to be a hell of a lot better actually so well, what i'll do is i'll make a, a, a small line here which we can roughly go to yeah and then what we do is we can then cut these out So hopefully, if I've done that correctly, we have our what yeah, we need. Yeah, near enough, and then yeah. we can just trim it with a knife. If That's it. I mean, we can higher. trim down because I've, I've got yeah. a scroll saw behind us. I can whip round it on that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's the plan with it. And then obviously, what we do is we'll then do the same for the front and for the back. Yeah. On this one as well. Yeah. And then obviously, what we've got all the parts, and we can use double sided tape to sticky it on. Yeah, for speed. To for, to be honest, for us, because otherwise, white glue would do it. Yeah. Um, hot glue as mm -hmm. well. But we'll double side it just for speed and yes. purposes. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get this one stuck on, get it drawn out, get it all cut out, yeah. and we'll come back when we stick it all off. Okay, so over on the scroll saw and we have done our panels, which then come along and we'll go on here. One thing to remember, as we might have actually forgot slightly, is that when we did the first one here, we put this one on. Yes, you can sort of guessed it, it is a little bit short <laughs> because we weren't allowing for the overlap of the thickness of the wood. So consequently, we've come down with plan B because we've got a little bit left over, luckily. And now we can just come in now and that one will fit in here. And then this one will come on the end. No problem at all. We've left an overlap so we can trim it to precise measurements yeah. because that's the type of guys we are. Trick is do your sides first. Yeah. And then, do you, and then measure your feet mm. so you can, I always forget. I have to admit, I always forget to leave the overhang because yes. you just measure it to the. That's it. I just measure it to the box and yeah. not allow yeah, the yeah, thickness yeah, yeah. of the wood. Yeah. Go, so oh, allow the thickness of the wood on two of your sides yeah. at least, and then it will give you neat edges hmm. or corners, should I say? Yes, yes, you get cool. proper nice corners then. Yeah. So next thing up, it's as simple as super sticky tape, double sided, double just for sided. speed. But you could use whatever you wanted to. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just remember, if you're using, because this is. 
uh, basswood, isn't it? Which yeah. is a bit harder. If you're using balsa, which is a lot softer, and you're going to white glue it, yes. it'll warp. Yes. Because obviously the moisture. So. Too long actually because we got an overhang I wasn't allowed for the overhang. So just have the strips like this. Yep. Yeah. Sure just we'll trim them off a little bit. Because otherwise they can overhang and be a pain to clean. I think I've lost my oh yeah, my nice cutting scissors. Yeah. Right <laughs> Sticks well to this stuff. <laughs> yeah. A little too well in some cases. Right. Okay. So, what I'll now do is said, you can see, hopefully, there it is. Double sided sticky. And as you say, it really is, is for speed more than anything, isn't it? Isn't this right? Does... Okay. Of course, it'll be right. It's like that. Right. Happy. If you're happy. I'm happy if you're happy. Yeah. Just. Do it. Push it on. And that ain't coming off. Nice. 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 Right. Okay. So it is going to be trimmed down even further. But it's getting in. I must admit, I've never used this before. I'm like you. I've used traditional balsa. Yes, I've moved. I've got some basswood, to be honest, but I could do your little scroll saw. Hmm. Um, I don't know why it, it, it actually trims like with a knife. Yeah. So if you go with the grain, it's okay. It should be fine, yeah. Going against the grain is going to be the problem, isn't it? Obviously, the pulse is just mm -hmm. so soft and, yeah, you know. But, so, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think definitely we... planking. This is, you know, if you're doing the bases, you want something a bit. Cause um, like veneer. Yes. People using veneer now mm -hmm. as well, which is not a bad, but it's not exactly the cheapest. No, I can imagine. Product. You can get a roll off so. Amazon, to be honest. It's, yeah, you know. Um, Right, something like that. Yeah, that'll do. Move on. Right. Again, I can see the thing with balsa wood because it's easier to work with and just score it and cut it and all the rest of it. But as you say, if you're getting any type of water near it or moisture, like PVA yeah. glues and stuff, then yeah. it's going to be a little bit of a And like I say, it's fuzzy, so it's, it don't paint so nice. You know when you're going to... Yeah. Um, obviously, tying the frame to the thing because we're just going to paint it black. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, it just it, it's one of them, like I say, you've got to seal it because it just sucks everything and it just absorbs it. Yeah. Which, again, when you're using acrylic paint, it makes it damp mm -hmm. and warps it again. You, yeah. Right. Yeah. Nice. And tip. We'll just be sanding these. Obviously, what we can do is we can take this, pop this back out, yep. sand them square off and everything yep. else, uh, and go through. So, yeah, it's very nice. Right. Well, I'll do to do the other bits off camera. And then next up is trim it down, trim it down. fill in any gaps. Yep. So, we'll be using the. So, uh, got, you might see we've got a little gap just up here. Yeah. Well, we'll just putty. fill that in with the, the textured paste from AK, which we use, which is this stuff here. Yeah. And then that will just fill that in, blend all that back in, and then we can get on to doing some static grass work. Nice. The exciting stuff. Yeah, fire it up, fire up the uh, applicator. That's it. Right, okay, back in a minute. Right, so as you can see, sides are on, um, and now we're peddling wood. So I'm literally just carving uh, with a strong blade <laughs> um, what would hopefully just take out some of these little bits where obviously we didn't cut it too close with the saw. And again, like Matt was saying, it doesn't have to be mega we can touch in little bits as well. Isn't that right, Matt? It is, yes. It's, yeah. You're near enough, don't worry about it. We'll just we'll, uh, mm -hmm. like say, fill it in. Yeah. We'll so, make good. So, yes. And I've only almost cut my finger off once. So, yeah. Doing well. Yeah, that's it. Hey, and he is on standby. Yeah, no, she'd kill me if we turned up. <laughs> I won't go there. I'll go to a different hospital. Because <laughs> it's not going to be worth the... That's, yeah. The <laughs> it's not going to be worth the earache. Yeah, that's it. Right, so we'll just... 
again this stuff's a lot stronger than balsa there's no doubt about it um, but if you're running with the grain it's quite easy but if you're going against the grain that's when you're having a a few little issues but actually when you get a bit of a hang of it don't get carried away yeah, you've got a sharp a, instrument in your hand yes this is just <laughs> moving a little bit on the sides again we're sort of rushing this because we're trying to get it all done in one day normally you'd let the sides totally dry before you attempt this yeah How's that? Good old so that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Just, yep. That's it. Keep the chippings. Diorama bits, broken wood. <laughs> that's a bit desperate. Oh, yeah. are we? Okay. Right. There we go. Are we happy with that? Yeah. We are. I just put it upside down. Mate. Just tip it upside tip down. Tip it upside down. That's the thing. Yeah, if you don't fall off, it's loose. And yeah. Some bobs. Okay. There we go. Yeah, nice. just got to trim these edges. Mm -hmm. Well, we might be better doing them. I'd like, well, yeah, I'm just doing them when they're yeah, dry. When it's dry, trim the edges up and you'll be yeah. good to go. But yeah. yeah, there we go. Trimmed up looking the part very nicely indeed. So, what's next? Fill in the gaps. Yeah. And uh, and then we're moving on to, like I say, some, some grass applications. Nice. So, filling in the gaps, we'll just be using the that stuff. That stuff, yeah. The fixed uh, stuff that made these patches and the bits we did up here. Yeah. Just to touch in the corners and all the rest of it. Yeah. Smooth it out and everything. Yeah. And then, yeah, on with grass. So, we'll get that sorted and we'll be back when we do the grass. Okay. 